Scumbag Millionaire asks, what's your opinion on pause deadlifts? I hate them. They suck. That's like the worst movement. If there's one thing that I dread, it's pause deadlifts. Uh, but I think they're great at reinforcing positioning. It is difficult to pause a heavy deadlift over mid, uh, I'm sorry, out of position. You have to be over the midfoot, and it's going to reinforce a good starting position. It's going to uh, force you to pull the slack out of the bar if you're pausing one or two inches off the ground, because if you tend to jerk on the barbell, you're just going to jerk yourself out of position, and it's going to be really difficult to pause that weight. So it reinforces good positioning uh, if you're doing it correctly. One thing that I used to do, my biggest problem was trying to sit back too much and get a vertical torso to take some of the tension off my back uh, and this was the biggest problem with my deadlifts from the floor once I started pausing uh, my coach Austin was noticing that I would sit my hips back and just pull it into my shins because it was easier to pause in that position so he would tell me over and over and over stop sitting back stop getting a vertical torso leave your shoulders over the bar and I think doing pause deadlifts really helped me understand how to deadlift Albo Carr says, favorite barbells and why? I would say the Ohio Power Bar, but if I had to pick one barbell, it would probably be the BNR Bar. You can get it on Rogue Fitness. It's pretty affordable, and the reason is, uh, it has center knurling, which I like for my for uh, squats, but the center knurling is not nearly as aggressive or sharp as an Ohio Power Bar, so you can do power cleans with it without shredding your neck, um, or front squats without shredding your neck. Res Billy says, my 12-year-old daughter plays competitive volleyball. Do you think she could benefit from basic strength training? Yes, absolutely. Anyone could be benefit from strength training. The thing with training kids, very young kids, is you can't be totally uh, practical with them or explain, you know, like I could explain to a 25-year-old that, hey, look, if you're wanting to gain some weight, if you're wanting to get strong, we need to do the bench squat, the death, and the overhead press, and this is why. You can't explain that to a kid. Their eyes are going to glaze over. So you have to make it uh, engaging and fun. Uh, if they really enjoy doing barbell movements, then great, keep doing that. You have to be intelligent with your programming, don't overload them. Um, uh, so if they are not totally interested in barbell training, then do some strongman stuff. Have them push a sled, pull a sled. If there's multiple kids, they can be competitive. Have them swing on monkey bars, have them carry a sandbag. Don't scare them away by telling them you have to do squats and you have to do heavier, this and that. It's going to backfire on you. Ben Rice 86, are you ever going to make some videos on how to coach? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, what I will suggest is what I always do whenever someone comes in the gym, I, uh, I'll have them perform the squat, the bench, or the deadlift without me giving any instructions. So I'll have them start with the bar, I'll add a little bit of weight, so they'll do a few sets, unless there's something that's god-awful wrong that they're going to hurt themselves, then I'll uh, interject and say something. Um, but the majority of the time, I'll have them perform the movement, see what they're already doing, uh, and I'll wait until we get a little bit of weight on the bar so that I can see how they move with a loaded barbell because it's kind of odd for a lot of people to squat just an empty barbell. Sometimes they need some weight to get down to depth. Um, but I'll watch them do a few sets and then after that I'll talk uh, and usually it'll be kind of one or two cues at a time. I don't want to sit there and talk to them for 30 minutes about you need to do all this, go. So usually I'll fix their stance and then I'll have them perform a set. I'll fix the bar position, I'll have them perform a set. I'll tell them they need to bend over more, I'll tell them to push their knees out, uh, and I'll kind of take it one or two cues at a time. Don't overwhelm them, and don't overcoach them. Brian Wood 42 says, I'm gonna do my first comp at Alabama Strongest Man, novice division, axle clean and press, could I use fat grips? Uh, you could, because that's gonna get where you're grabbing, it's gonna be a fat grip, but if you're doing a continental clean, so you're picking it up onto your stomach, that's probably gonna hurt, uh, and you can do some damage if you're just using a barbell. It's nice to have an axle bar because the surface area is greater, so you're not resting on your stomach. But if you're just, if it's light enough to where you're just power cleaning the weight, then yeah, you could use a fat grip. Just be careful, because the fat grips could pop off if you're trying to rotate really quickly. But it's better than nothing. Tyler Eats says, do you gauge your lifts using percentages of your one rep max now that you're using RPE to choose weights? No, it's not based off a of one rep max. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about RPE because I'm still learning. Jay Fox says, I've heard good things about taking contract showers, hot and cold, uh, after your workout and in terms of optimal recovery. What are your thoughts on the best way to shower? Uh, so I'm not going to say anything with uh, regards to whether hot or cold contrast showers help with recovery. I doubt it. Um, honestly, if I'm experiencing some legs, let's take legs for example. If your legs are sore and you go uh, get, put them in a, under the running water in a cold shower, how much do you think it's going to do to penetrate your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, all really big muscles? Do you think it's going to penetrate all the way down to the bone, just some cold water sprinkling on it? I doubt it. Um, and even if it did, I don't know. Personally, I can't speak from uh, a scientific view because I don't have any studies, but I would say no. 
Uh, I will know that if my back is sore, usually hot or cold, running water on it just feels good. So if it makes you feel better, uh, you could do that. But with all that, I do take a freezing cold shower every single morning, not to improve recovery because it wakes me up and I like it. John Sisson says, why is it called a stiff leg deadlift when you slightly bend your knees? Uh, okay, it's not a completely stiff leg deadlift because you don't want your knees hyperextended. I would call it a stiffer leg deadlift. John Sisson, uh, same one. Is it important to have a bigger and stronger butt for lockout strength on the deadlift? What? No, man. What do, how do you measure how strong your butt is? My butt is this strong, it's even stronger. I can feel it getting stronger by the day. Just increase your deadlift and your butt will get stronger, I guess. Chase Lindley says, what's your favorite meal to cook and eat? Breakfast, by far. It's quiet, everyone else is asleep. I'm always really hungry in the morning. Fresh coffee brewing, bacon sizzling. I love it. Lifting Lifton says, uh, my wife and I share a dream of opening our own gym just like you. What advice could you give us that you wish you had when you first started? <sighs> I would suggest giving away a lot of free stuff free services, free programs, uh, free competitions. Just get people in the facility. Stop trying to convince people to buy this program and buy this $100 membership when you haven't even established yourself. I give away a lot of free stuff that leaves people coming back for more and then eventually I could charge them for my service. Next, I would suggest figuring out your target market. Don't try to please everyone. When I first opened up Mud Tame Strength, I was a little bit clueless as to where my direction was. I didn't want to leave anyone out. I think my business card said powerlifting, strongman, Olympic weightlifting, general strength training, athletic training, blah, 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 yoga, mobility. I felt like I didn't want to leave anyone out because I didn't want to miss out on any clients. All that does is confuse everyone. You're trying to please everyone that walks in the gym and you end up pleasing no one. You have to figure out your audience, figure out what you're good at, and then run with it. Try to attract those people because if you have a bunch of like-minded people in the gym, it's gonna be a better atmosphere and a better facility. There are still people who come in on Tame Strength, kind of unsure what it is, and they'll say, hey, I'm looking to do this, this, and this. And I'll be totally honest with them. I'll say, look, this is a strength training gym and I'm here to help you get stronger using basic barbell movements and strongman training if that's what you're interested in. I don't try to please everyone because it ends up bothering me, I get annoyed, and the client doesn't really get what they want. Matthew 18, 284 says, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how to train clients that have zero experience with weight training. Those are the best clients to train because they don't have any bad habits. It's a clean slate, easy. Buffness 2010 says he's been stuck at his current bench max. Uh, how does he break, break through his plateau? If you're benching once a week, bench twice a week. If you're benching twice a week, bench three times a week. If you're benching three times a week, bench four times a week. Jacob Carley, uh, did you ever get the silver bullet? No, thank goodness. Batter Josh says, is it possible to achieve intermediate status in one of the big four lifts while still being considered novice in another? Yes, absolutely. If you're one of the lifts needs uh, intermediate progression, go for it. If the others can get away with novice progression, why change it? If you can add five pounds to a lift, each and every training session, continue doing it. Don't change it if it's not broke. Hi, my name is R. How can I survive on only two dumbbells for two years until I get to the gym and use free weights? Look, if you have a smartphone and an Instagram account, you can probably figure out a way to get your hand on a barbell and some weights, whether you afford a gym membership or maybe uh, getting your hands on some cheap barbells, uh, cheap barbell and cheap plates on Craigslist. There are people in very poor countries who make weights out of cement blocks. You can get it done. You're not gonna get very far with two dumbbells. Super Saiyan Rose uh, says, I was wondering about bracing in the deadlifts. The correct, uh, the question is, when is it right, all right to exhale? Right before lockout or after finishing the whole lift? Uh, ideally, you would breathe, you would inhale and exhale at the bottom when the weight is resting on the ground. Never ever inhale or exhale during the movement on the way up or during the lowering phase. Um, it is okay, it's not ideal, but it's okay to exhale and then inhale at the top if that's what you need to do. I know that if I take a big breath in and I have a really slow grinder of a rep, when I get to the top, if I continue to hold my breath, uh, I'm gonna pass out. So I have to exhale and then inhale. And for bigger people, it might be hard to breathe at the bottom because you're hunched over, bent over. Uh, for anyone, it could be hard to breathe at the bottom, so it might be a better idea to take your breath at the top. Personally, when I set the barbell down, I'll put my hips really high. Once the bar's on the ground, I'll shoot my hips up. That clears a little bit of room to take a big 
breath into my belly, then I can brace and pull from there. Cimarron Shannon says, would you train any differently uh, for us that have to do our workouts early morning before work? No, you're just gonna need to take more time warming up, so make sure you allow that time, whether it's on a rower or a bike or an elliptical, getting your body temperature up and moving around before you start to lift. In the Marine Corps, I used to have to lift my roommate and I would get up at 2.30, we'd lift by 3 a.m. Uh, so that we were in formation, ready to go by 6 a.m. Um, and what I would do is I'd mix my pre-workout, so I had some caffeine in the morning, and I'd put it right by my bed. So as soon as my alarm went off, I'd down my caffeine and then be on my way. Uh, and I'd also make sure that the night before, I would eat a huge meal right before I went to bed so that I wasn't very hungry in the morning. So I'm not necessarily training in much of a fasted state because I'm literally ate so much the night before that in the morning I'm, I'm still full and I don't really have much of an appetite. It made training a lot easier. Bernather, man of war. Do you have any tips or recommendations for a lifter who is traveling for a long time and wants to maintain strength and muscle as much as possible? You gotta do what you can, find a gym, pay for a day pass, plan ahead so that you know what days you're gonna lift based off of where you're gonna be, uh, but you just gotta do what you can. What I would suggest is continue to eat and continue to sleep. Maintain your eating schedule and your sleeping schedule, and when you come back from traveling, uh, you won't have to play so much catch up. A lot of times when people uh, can't go to the gym for a couple of weeks or whatever, their whole diet, they start eating shit or they start uh, failing to eat as much as they should, and then they don't sleep as much, and that's what really gets them weaker. Matt Cavallero asks, uh, what's the best exercise to help increase the deadlift? This is probably the easiest question of the day. I'm gonna say it's the deadlift. The deadlift will increase your deadlift better than any other exercise. I'm being dead serious. There's not a secret to it. You've just got a deadlift, deadlift more. Uh, past the deadlift, I would suggest deadlift variations. A block pull, pause deadlift, a deficit deadlift. There is no secret formula of rear delt cable flies that strengthen your rhomboids, none of that garbage. You've just got to deadlift more. Our pit Zelawat, I stick to a 5 through one program to increase strength, but in two weeks the weight becomes too heavy to handle. What to do? Switch your program, uh, but you're doing something wrong if 5 through one becomes too heavy because you're supposed to use a training max, which is 90% of your one rep max, and even the weights are fairly light, 65, to 95% of 90%. So there's no reason you shouldn't be lifting it for five, three, one max reps, one or two reps. I think you're doing something wrong. But if you're stalling out, switch programs. Manny 20 Egg says, I'm doing my first strongman competition in June and July. What are some tips to not get as nervous or to choke up the competitions? Uh, take your time. I always see, a spe after the first event, I think your nerves are really gonna calm down, but you're gonna be extremely uh, nervous, that's okay. Don't be afraid of it. We all get nervous. I still get nervous when I compete. Uh, but don't get ahead of yourself. If you have one minute to complete max reps, just take your time, get that one rep, and then do another rep, and then do another rep. I see these guys that come in here and try to bang out as many reps as they can, and they're burnt out in 15 seconds. 45 seconds left, and they're, they're done. Uh, and they just, it's poor time management. So relax, take your time, have some fun, and good luck. Jacob Muich, uh, in our weight room at school, we argue about the hand position on bench. What are your thoughts on where to put them on the barbell? So as far as where to place them on the barbell, it's gonna vary for everyone. You wanna put them in a position that allows you to use the most amount of musculature. I don't want a really wide bench because you're leaving out a lot of muscles. I don't want a really narrow bench because you're leaving out a lot of muscles. We want a pretty neutral grip. Once the bar touches your chest, I talked about this earlier, once it touches your chest, your forearms are gonna be vertical from this angle, this way, and from the side angle, your elbows are gonna be under the bar. Cooper Napoli asks, what are the top three lessons that you've learned owning your own business? Number one, for you business owners just starting out, you've got to embrace the suck. Number two, you gotta keep moving forward. Doing something is better than doing nothing. I used to write down every morning three things that I was gonna to do today to better untamed strength or to get clients, get members. Sometimes it's gonna be hard because you're gonna be out of uh, options or you're gonna be out of solutions or ideas. You just have to write something down, do a whole bunch of stuff, see what sticks, see what doesn't. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to fail. And don't worry about always being right. 
You're gonna learn something from every experience, good or bad. And number three, know your target audience. You're not gonna please everyone. Figure out who you want to attract and go after it with your head down 100% RPE 10. That's it guys, I gotta go. This was way over time. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll do more in the future. I didn't get uh, to a lot of these good questions just because I have to go. So thanks for watching. Always remember, turn it on time.